In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can export images from your Lightroom catalog to your hard drive or external hard drive. Let's say, for example, I have all of these images and I've processed them to my liking. I've clicked on them, I've taken them to the develop module, and then I come back into my library to view my final processed images. Now, there are various ways which you can do this. Let's, for example, say I click on the one image. So the image with the white border, that is the one that the changes and the export will apply to. I can hold command or then control if you're on a PC and select various images, or I can select the first one, hold the shift key and click the last one, which will export all of them. For now, let's do one. So I select my image three ways. You can either go up to the top of your screen, click file, and then come down to export. You can right click on the image, scroll down to export, or if you're in the library module, you can come down to the export button at the bottom left of your screen. Let's use that one for now. As you click export, you'll see this new menu pop up, export one file. Now from the very top, export to, in this case, I'm going to use my hard drive, but you also have the option of going to email, hard drive, or then CD DVD. If you have Nick software plugins installed on your computer, you will have that option as well. That's a whole discussion for another time. For now, we select hard drive. All you do now is you go from the very top of this menu and work your way down. Export location. This is where you're telling Lightroom where you want your new images to be saved to. You can export to a specific folder, choose the folder later, or then the same folder as the original photo. I prefer to choose a specific folder to keep my raw images and my newly saved JPEGs apart. So we select a specific folder. Coming down, click on choose, and you can now go into your menu system and you can create the folder where you want your images saved to. Let's call it saved images for now. Hit create and then choose. So you can see here, users, Jerry desktop, saved images. I can now choose also to put my saved images into a subfolder of the directory I just created. For now, I'm quite happy I'm not gonna do that. I can also choose by clicking this box over here to add my newly saved images back into the catalog. So if you wanna have all of your raw images and JPEG images in your Lightroom catalog, you click that box as well. Not gonna do that for now. Now, existing files, ask what to do. This menu here will give you the option of should there be a file which Lightroom thinks is the same or has the same file name. You can either choose a new name for the exported file, overwrite it without warning, be careful of that option, or it can skip it. For now, go with ask what to do. So every time Lightroom runs into a problem where it's not sure whether the file should be overwritten or not, it'll ask you, so you take control of the process. Right, next step down, file naming. This is where you tell Lightroom what you want these new files to be called and how it should be named. Your options here include a whole range of custom names, original file numbers, file sequences, the date plus the file name, and so on and so forth. For now, I'm gonna choose custom name and then here you can type the new file name. So let's click on clever name, we'll call it clever name. All right, and you can see at the bottom, it shows you an example of what it's going to be. You can again choose whether your extension is going to be in a lower or upper case, personal preference there, all up to you. Next one down, video. If you have any video files here, you can select the video format and quality of it. Doesn't apply to us for now. File settings. Now this is important, depending on what you're going to do with your images. The, the most standard format you're going to be saving in is a JPEG file. Click on JPEG and you have other options here. PSD, that if you're going to work on your image in Photoshop, you want to choose that option. A TIFF, a DNG, which is a raw file, or then the original format in which the file was shot. We select JPEG for now. On quality, remember the smaller file size you want, the less you have to take your quality, not ideal. Keep that pumped up so you get the best quality image out. And then if you really need to limit the file size, you can click and you can give it the specific file size that you need. Not important for us for now, let's unclick that. The color space, if you click on the menu, gives you three options for now. sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Pro Photo. A whole discussion for another time. The simple version is, if you are going to place your images on the internet, upload them to Facebook, your website, or your blog, Choose sRGB, that is the most correct color balance for the, the internet. Adobe RGB and Pro RGB 
will be useful if you're going to do a lot more processing in another application such as Photoshop or if you can have some of your images printed. Then check with your printer what color space they would like it in. For us now, let's stick to sRGB and then we'll move on one step down. Image sizing. If you want to resize your images to fit a specific area, for example on Facebook or your blog and you want 800 pixels, you can click resize to fit the longest edge and you can tell it 800. So now this image as it gets saved will be fitting inside 800 pixels at the longest edge. So if you've got a landscape portrait it'll be 800 wide, if you have a portrait it'll be 800 pixels high. You can work through various inches, centimeters, pixel options here and set them as you go. Resolution. If you are going to print your images or you want to save high resolution images, keep this up to 300. Should you be saving your images for web, you're going to type in 72 or 96. Depending on who you ask, those are the two ones that you will use to place on the web. Next step out, output sharpening. Now if you watched the previous videos, you would have done some sharpening to your images already. I prefer not to add output sharpening in Lightroom here, but the option for you are sharpen for either the screen, such as the internet, matte paper or glossy paper. So if you know what you're going to be printing on, you can select here and also how high or how aggressively Lightroom should output sharpen those images for you. Metadata. If you have any specific information you would like to add into this image, you can go and choose what you want here. Copyright, copyright and contact info or all the information. I generally leave this on all but you have the option here of removing the location or writing the keywords into that file as well. Watermarking. Should you choose to add a watermark to your image, you can click the box over here and then you can choose here to the simple copyright watermark. If you go down to edit watermarks, click on that, you'll get the option now of what you want in. So it'll say copyright, Jerry Van Velt, where you want to put it, the opacity and so forth and so on. So you can save all of those options, hit save, give it a name, let's call it Jerry Watermark and create. So now, every time I go and export my images, I can choose which watermark I would like to use. I'm not going to do that for now. Post-processing. You can tell Lightroom, after it's done its export, what it should be doing. Do nothing. Show in the Finder, so it'll jump straight to your Finder or, or um, Microsoft Explorer. Open in Photoshop if you have it installed, or in any other application you so choose. For now, we're going to tell it to do nothing. Right, once you've worked your way through all of that, you simply hit the export key. You'll see at the top left, Lightroom does a bit of work, that bar will fill up and I'm done. So I have now exported that image to a specific chosen fo folder on my hard drive. Now, let's say for example, I want to do this one, I hold command and that file and that file. And I also want to export them to exactly the same place as the previous file with the same settings. Right click, remember you can use the bottom left hand export button as well. Go to export and then you see here export with previous. If you go to export, it'll open up that menu system for you again. But for now, we're going to stick to export with previous and you get a new menu system. It'll tell me the following files already exist. Do you wish to overwrite, skip or rename them? Here you have the choice. Overwrite means I'm then going to lose my original file. Skip means I'm not going to have some of my new files I'm wanting to export. Cancel will cancel the whole operation or you click on use unique names. Lightroom will then process those three images and export them to the same directory where we had all the other ones.